when hope is gone, undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. Dead body. Hi guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fan fiction story. If you like this type of content, smash the like button and subscribe for future videos and updates that I do post regularly on my community tab. If you want to get access to my content early, check out my Discord and get access to new episodes of my fan fictions. Well, fan fiction episodes or parts early. Now, let's continue where we last left off in our story. Deku was quiet when he entered the replacement limousine that Lex calls for. Technically, Lex of Earth 3 is called Alexander. I'll just have to remember that for future reference. I know you're angry, Deku, but there's not much you can do about it. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Luthor. What do you mean? I could tell you, but it'll be easier if I show you. But not here. Do you know a secluded area? Where, uh, where our activities won't be noticed? I know a place, driver. Take us outside of Metropolis to my own vacation home. Understood, sir. When they arrived, Deku calmly got out of the vehicle. As there was a huge boulder not too far away, Deku instantly shot his green heat vision that went right through the boulder. As the boulder exploded, as smaller pieces of the rock begin to fly all over the place. Alexander was shocked. It can't be. Are you a Kryptonian? No, I'm no Kryptonian. Not sure what I am or what my race is called, but I'm nothing like, like that Kryptonian. We have similar abilities. I'm still learning what I can do. My adopted mother was helping me develop my powers before that bastard killed her. You want revenge, don't you? Of course I want revenge. But as much as I would like to go off and start killing their peoples, their killed them and their allies, I can't just blindly attack them. Like I said, my powers are still developing and I need to make sure I'm skilled and powerful enough to avenge my mother. Now I fully understand Harley's, your mother's last words to me. You are indeed special. Tell me more. As Deku decided to trust Alexander Luthor, and reveal some of what he can do. And to say, uh, say Alexander was impressed was a understatement. Alexander now fully understand why Harley Quinn kept, kept him a secret for so long. He's their answer to get rid of the syndicate, to get rid of Ultraman. He might be no match for him now. But given some time and proper training, the Earth could finally be free from those monsters. I need your help with your resources. It would make my training a whole lot faster. What do you say, Luthor? 
You got yourself a deal. I can't allow this to pass up. You are correct. We need to wait until you're powerful enough before we start moving against the crime syndicate. I know the perfect place to take you. It is one of my secret laboratories that the crime syndicate doesn't have any knowledge of. It would be the perfect place for you to stay and continue your training with your abilities. We need to pinpoint how you get your powers though. According to what my mother found out before her murder, I get my powers from the sun. Explain. Deku went in great detail what he knows about his genetics and how he gets his powers. Interesting. I believe we could speed up the process a little bit. How? It's quite simple. Once we pinpoint exactly, precisely what your body absorbs, then I could reproduce the same effect using a machine. Think of it like a artificial moonlight. We also need to figure out how much UV rays and energy you absorb from the moon. It would be wise for us to go back to this state. There's things there that I wish not to leave, including my ship. Wait, you still have your ship? Yes, to my knowledge. That's the only thing that could actually hurt me. I need to get rid of it, destroy it. I understand, but wouldn't it be wiser to learn from the ship before you destroy it? If you must. But, that, but the ship needs to be destroyed. I can't have a weakness like that for anyone to get their hands on. Just a single piece of metal from my ship could hurt me. In theory, it could even kill me. It completely nullifies my invulnerability. A few hours later, he did arrive at the secret laboratory where he spent many years continuing his training. Alexander transported his ship and his his ship and his secret journals to the laboratory while Deku used the advanced technology for his training. Meanwhile, Alexander was engulfed in learning anything he can from the spacecraft that Deku came from, came, uh, traveled in to this planet. Learning the alien language was quite tasking. When he started to research the ship. Well, once Alex... But it wasn't very hard for Alexander to figure out. With his intellect. It didn't take him long to get a brief idea. Of the dialect. Of the alien language. Piece by piece. He put it all together. Lex, stop... Stop studying the alien language and look out, look, look on his wrist to see his watch. As he walked towards the observing window in the training chamber that Deku is currently in. This is Alexander. We're going to begin your first training exercise. I will be releasing combat robots. Your job is to neutralize them in any way possible. No heat vision or using your telekinesis to control technology. Those are forbidden during this exercise. As he shut off the intercom and press the button as they combat as combat robots begin to activate and begin to run through his programming as it begins to lock on to Deku. As the combat robot immediately charged forward towards Deku. Deku watched a combat robot open fire upon Deku using some sort of energy rifle. 
Deku moved at the last second as the energy attack was redirected using his telekinesis. As the other robots activated and started to tar targeting Deku with their weapons as several more energy weapons were being fired off until suddenly all of their weapons blow up in their hands. All of the combat robots discarded their energy weapons and took out their melee weapons. Deku started to dodge and weave around the blade, the bladed weapons with great ease. Meanwhile, Alexander Luthor was getting data from all from the exercise from all of the high tech technology that is relaying the data from the training session to Alexander's personal computer. Deku sh shattered one of the blades with a karate chop. The moment the bladed weapon was destroyed, all of the combat robots surround Deku. Deku released a small psychic or shockwave of psychic energy as all the robots go flying and smashing in, into the wall, damaging their circuits as the combat robots shut down. All of them at the same time. Time has gone by as he continued his intense training day by day with the moonlight generator. He's constantly absorbing the artificial moonlight that's increasing his abilities, making them more powerful. Not only does he absorb the artificial moonlight during the day, he, he absorbed the real moonlight at night. As we go into a large time skip, nine years has passed. Deku is 16 years old. These years, he's got used to his body and his powers. He even developed or manifested more powers like the power of flight. As you can see a 16 year old Deku inside the training room blasting targets with his green heat vision as Alexander Luthor entered through the door. There you are Deku. I believe you're ready. But if you're going to go through with this you need to use a code name. True. As he remembered the little nickname his deceased adopted mother would occasionally call him Brightburn. In memory of my mother. I like it. Kind of has a ring to it. Very well. Any idea where you're, where you're going to start? Gotham, Alexander. Gotham. I'm going to hurt Owlman. Not physically, not mentally, but financially. I'm going to target all of his operations, one after another. Over the years, Alexander found out real fast, Deku is quite vicious when you become his enemy. Deku has never hide the fact that he's very calculated and, and ruthless to Alexander. As Alexander hand over a high-tech flash drive, if you're going to go, if you're going to start to hurt his operations, download in anything useful on this flash drive. We need more information if we're going to hurt them. We also need allies, but unfortunately, who can help us just don't want to, or 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 they are already dead. Ultraman doesn't like to fight the same opponent twice. Thanks, Lex. I see Pocket the Flash Drive in, in his pocket. By the way, Alexander, is it done? Almost forgot, as he hand over a black metal face guard mask that covered the entire bottom part 
of the face of the person who wears it. As Deku attached the face guard, ma guard mask over his face, the moment he placed it over his face to conceal his identity, while the, the, while the mask basically conceals his identity, it has a built-in voice changer to disguise his voice. The moment he placed the face guard over his mouth, or his face, his hair instantly turned to black. This face guard mask has an air filter. So you could use this face guard mask as a gas mask. It also has a device to alter your voice. And it gives you temporary, and it also provides you with a temporary hair color to further conceal your identity. It's in very important if it's very important we keep your identity intact. It's not time to fully reveal yourself just yet. Agreed. Keeping my identity a secret is vital. But how are you exactly going to go about it? I'm going to strike in the shadows, gather information, gather allies, attack. I might have the powers, I might one day have the power to even rival Ultraman. But I'm not some stupid brute that doesn't think things through like some sort of idiot. I'm going after crime. I'm going after the crime syndicate. But I'm going to do it my way. What are you going to do, Alexander? How long can you keep this up? Eventually, they're going to find out that you're not truly loyal to their cause. We just need information. The syndicate has has something. I don't know I don't know much about it. I just have a name called the Quantum Trigger. Before the jester was killed, he sent me information about it. This Quantum Trigger. It's still a mystery. Not even the gesture knew what it did. But if the syndicate is interested in this device, they're planning something, and I want to know what that is. And if it's possible, we need to steal this quantum trigger. What's been troubling recently, Ultraman's been consuming a lot of kryptonite. And he kept ranting about other dimensions. It's a possibility the two are connected. But I have no solid proof. It might be just the rants of a madman. Just say, this quantum trigger. Grants you the ability to go to other dimensions. Why would they even want to? My guess is to conquer. And add more power to their crime syndicate. I don't know much about the mission travel. I'm not even sure it's even possible. But we're going to have to play this smart. Very well. I'll keep that in mind as I move forward. Alexander and Deku walked out of the secret laboratory. You know your mother would be proud of you. Thank you, Alexander. She was one of the rare good ones, unfortunately. That's apparently a rarity on this planet. As Deku blasted off the moment he got outside and began to fly towards Gotham City, Deku finally arrived at Gotham as he stopped flying and began to hover in the sky above Gotham. Alexander, this is Brightburn. 
I just arrived at Gotham. As he contacted Lex through his communicator in his ear. Excellent. I just heard down the pipeline that Dr. Cold has resurfaced. If you could, if you can somehow form an alliance, it would be a great first start. He hates Owlman with a passion. Long story short, Owlman was responsible for Dr. Cold's wife, Nora. Because of, in, because of his intervention, Nora was killed. Apparently, Owlman interrupted the process of Dr. Cold curing his wife from her rare disease. And he's had a grudge against him ever since then. Thanks for the intel. I can see why you want me to recruit him first. After all, our situations does have similarities. Brightburn out. As Brightburn can resume, is fine, but a far more slower pace, scanning the city. With a name like Dr. Cold, shouldn't it be too hard to find him. Of a villain, he, his name might be evolve around ice. So I just have to look for low temperatures somewhere in Gotham. As he was broken out of his musings, as he heard gunshots in the distance, somewhere in the city, with his superhero. What do we have here? As he could hear more gunfire, as a car is being chased by the police, as the criminals were open fire upon the police cruiser, as Brightburn has a smirk under his mask, his face guard mask, and follow them, and follow the sound, or the, the source of the sound. Ducky used his superior eyesight while, while flying high in the air, as he saw Gotham Police Department squad car following a bunch of criminals and having a high-speed chase. They just robbed a bank as they begin to open fire upon the police officers behind them. Their squad car, the officer, did return fire as a stray bullet hit the driver of the, of the police vehicle. As his partner, the passenger, pulled the dead body in the back seat of the car and took the wheel and continued and continued the police pursuit calling his radio informing him his superior there's been an officer down he's pursuing he's pursuing the pursuit gotta love the classics Deku shot a low powered green heat vision Shooting into the tires of the police cruiser, forcing the police car to rear off the road. As the tire was blown up, or well, the tower, the top of oh, the tire no longer able to be um, used, as the tire basically blew up. As the police cruiser can no longer continue the pursuit as they immediately call in for reinforcements. With that done, Brightburn focused his attention following the group of criminals that just robbed a bank. Eventually following the trail leading to the group of criminals headed to some sort of headquarters that's located not far off from the abandoned Ace Chemical Plant. The building itself was an old factory, abandoned old factory, that that these criminals is using to bunker down with two guards posted in the front of the main entrance and two more in the back it was guarded as well 
Bright Brightburn used his x-ray vision to get the layout of the factory. It has two levels, the ground level of the old factory with equipment. And the second floor seemed to be like a big office area with several rooms. He could de he detected several life signs scattered all around the abandoned factory using his super hearing to detect heartbeats. Brightburn could always have easily seen all the people with his x-ray vision, but he's always been one to be to be cautious and double check. That's why he uses super hearing to detect all the heartbeats. Better better be safe and sorry. As Brightburn slowly hovered downwards, when he got close enough, Brightburn disrupt the lights as the street lights begin to flicker off on and on off and on until the entire street block was hit with a blackout from a unknown power outage when the lights finally turn off brightburn flew downwards and grabbed one of the lookouts by the throat and flew upwards When he was at a, satisfied, a satisfied altitude, he hovered to a stop as the man is struggling to get out of his grip. You're going to answer some questions, little human. You can go to hell, you bastard. I'm not telling you a goddamn thing, you filthy metahuman. Very poor choice of words, human. I could always torture you and get the information that way, but but we both don't have that sort of time. That means you're completely useless to me. You have no value. So far, you have no use. Goodbye, human. As he let go, as the man falls downward towards the street to his desk, as the man screams the entire way down until his body hit the surface of the street, right in front of their little headquarters <clears throat> as blood and guts splatter over the area. Brightburn teleported right behind the other lookout and plunged his hand into the man's back, pulling out his spine as all the man's organs fall out from inside his body. His body basically was ripped in half as the spine that he he grabbed onto was, uh, had had the top body of his well top torso of the man's body still attached to it as he tossed the part of the torso to the side casually brightburn opened the main door with his telekinesis and walked inside as the entire building is pitch black because of Brightburn's little attack with his telekinesis completely making the entire area go in a blackout frying all electronics that he's able to affect the older machines he wouldn't be able to affect leaving everyone inside panicking Brightburn had no problem seeing in the dark, and he, and he has already memorized the layout when he used his x-ray vision to get the complete layout, so he knew exactly where to go. And with his super hearing, he could, det he could detect any human that's in the factory with great ease. As Brightburn heard several footsteps that's, that's entering the room, as two figures with flashlights could be seen in the dark, in the darkness of the factory. As the two criminals that were directly under Bane, who Bane works for under Owlman, the syndicate, comes into his view of sight. Their allegiance is identified by the Mexican wrestling mask 
that they wear over their faces. Both men is using the right hand to hold the flashlight while they use their left hand to hold their handguns, trying to locate the two members that have missed their scheduled checkup. They were supposed to contact them immediately when they lost power. But luckily, the machines run on a backup power, a backup generator that wasn't affected by the blackout. Immediately I spotted the puddle of blood as that put them on the edge and high alert. As they begin to scan the scan the entire room of the lobby with their flashlight and handguns pointing in all directions. The two minions of Bane opened fire when they saw an outline of a shadow figure that ran past them. As they, let, as they let out a couple rounds in the direction where they saw it last. When the low ranking minions of Bane, one of, well, one of the low ranking minions of Bane looked back at his comrade as his eyes widen as he sees his friend slightly floating above the ground. Help me, as he was yanked into the darkness by an unknown force as all he could hear was a crunch noise as he heard a dub dub noise hit the ground the remaining minion in the lobby area opened fire wildly he's clearly panicking and scared out of his mind as he shoots in random directions into the darkness of the lobby And when he ran out of bullets, he heard nothing but pure silence. The man instantly cough up blood as he saw a hand ripping out of his chest. As Brightburn plunged his hand into his back and it came out the other side ripping out of his chest as he holds the man's heart in his hand. The heart begins to pulse. One pump begin to pulse repeatedly, slowly at first, as he forcibly yanked his hand out, out of the man's chest, as he falls down to the ground, dead. As he has a hole in the middle of his chest. As Brightburn dropped the heart casually, as it fell to the ground, as Brightburn stepped onto the human heart, as the human organ was smushed by Brightburn, by Brightburn's heel, as he continued to walk towards the nearest door on the other side of the lobby. Once he stepped through the door by opening it up with his telekinesis, he found himself in a hallway that is filled with minions of Bane. Right behind them is the door leading to the well, door leading to the inner parts of the factory. They didn't even see him coming. Brightburn moved and executed his assault with ruthlessness and with a calculated with a calculated movement as he is. As he assaulted and killed his his first target by snapping his neck with his telekinesis, a several eyes sickles were created using his cryokinesis. Of all his old abilities, cryokinesis was the first one to resurface. He still can't he still can't perform cryokinesis. He hasn't developed his telekinesis to that point yet. In his current body. He used these years to train. But he hasn't regained his previous prowess. That he had with his telekinesis. It's going to be a long road. Before he gets to that point. He might be able to lift cars now. With his telekinesis. But anything bigger than that. Is beyond his reach. Beyond his skill level. 
bright burn eyes begin to glow a bright green color as he unleash his green heat vision, killing everyone in the hallway. As body parts begin to fall, as dead bodies and body parts begin to decorate the ground of the hallway, as deck as Brightburn casually walked over the pieces of pieces of well pieces of human parts that used to be a full fledged person scattered all about organs everywhere. It's quite a gruesome sight. He didn't want to dirty his boots, so Brightburn hovered over the pieces of the corpses. When he was finally in the clear, his feet gently touched the ground as he opened the door with his telekinesis, leaving carnage behind him. As he calmly opened the door, basically with his telekinesis, and entered a more populated area of the old abandoned factory. The moment he entered the large room, It was filled with different kinds of factory machines. You know that some of these machines, this mechanical equipment, didn't belong to the factory originally. These equipment look fairly brand new. As he watches in the shadows, all the minions of Bane go through the process of making some sort of chemical converting it and developing venom pills Bane chose this method using turning the liquid of venom into the pill form it's a lot more effective method than shooting the the chemical through the veins and this method is it's a lot more safer than injecting it into your bloodstream. It and it clearly lasts longer. The more pills you take, the more dangerous the side effects will be. Taking more than two Oh, sorry, try it again. Taking more than two is usually safe. But anyone that uses more than two pills, their bodies will destroy itself. There's only been a rare few that's capable of taking more than two venom pills and surviving. Brightburn used his chance to see if he could overhear any information. Come on, man. Let's hurry up this batch. power might be out but luckily for us the backup generator these machines are hooked up to the backup generator the backup power that's the only reason why we're continuing to work like this the last thing we need is the boss to get mad I agree man if, if we don't make these if we don't make the quota soon the boss will snap our neck Snap our necks. Let's hurry up already. Pretty hard enough to do this just using spotlight alone. Interesting. I don't wonder what kind of shipments they're talking about. Bright burn it a bright burr burn is unaware that the shipment they're talking about is a shipment of venom pills. He doesn't know much about Bane outside of outside of he worked for Alman in the syndicate. He doesn't know if this Bane has any powers, if he's a metahuman or not. Brightburn finally acted and grabbed one of the lackeys, one of the lackeys of Bane, and pulled him into the shadows as he snapped his neck. 
as he continued to pick off, pick them off one by one, using diversions to separate them, as he purposely damaged one of the machines with his heat vision to lure some of them away, leaving one of them in the middle of the room as Brightburn used his telekinesis to knock the man over into the large metal container filled with the liquid venom. As the man fell into the liquid, some of, some of the venom got into his system accidentally acc accidentally swallowing some of it once the once the chemical entered the man's body his body begins to grow in size and mass uncontrollably uncontrollable until his body destroyed itself that only took a couple of seconds as the man floats in the liquid venom dead brightburn moved on to the next target ripping off his head using his bare hands as he proceeded to kill the rest of them by creating ice shards and launching them towards everyone in the large factory chamber. It didn't take long for Brightburn to kill everyone inside. Brightburn immediately destroyed all of the equipment with his, with his super strength and heat vision. As he proceeded to go further into the factory, once Brightburn arrived at the docking area of the factory, where they're loading crates of venom pills on a truck at the docking area. Brightburn noticed Bane himself as he hides in the darkness. I know you're there. You've been causing me quite a headache. Why don't you step out of the shadows into the light so I can see who's responsible for killing my men? In destroying my property. Brightburn came walking out of the shadows into the light. As more spotlights shine upon Brightburn. Illuminating his appearance. His pitch black hair. His glowing green eyes. And wearing his metal black metal face guard mask. Concealing the, the bottom part of his face. Who the hell are you supposed to be? Do you have the foggiest idea? Who I am, boy? Who you're fucking with? Brightburn vanish, using his pure speed, and appeared right above Bane. Don't care, as he slammed his fist into Bane's face, sending the man backwards as he begins to grind, grind his heels against the ground. Bane got up to his feet as he was kneeling as he got up to his feet as Bane's minions begin to surround Brightburn all pointing their rifles at him kill him they all open fire only to see their bullets stop in midair like their bullets were frozen in time as the bullets slowly turn around and was and was sent flying back at them as all of his minions fell to the ground dead Bright, Brightburn used a universal sign with his finger to just bring it and that's where we're gonna stop it hope you guys have a good night and day judge my time zone so and I'll catch you in the next part